Hey y'all, your girl G here. Welcome back to my channel. Now I may sound a little gloomy, may sound a little down. It's been a minute since I've talked to you guys. Cause since this week, I ain't uploaded nothing since, shoot, Love After Lockup, I think, or no, the last video I did last week or this beginning of this week, it was just basically a repost. Um, if y'all watched it, thank you for watching it. But after y'all know what happened, since America decided to elect President Cheeto again, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get up. I couldn't make videos. I just checked out for a few days. I ain't even gonna lie to you. That's the way I'm gonna call it. Just complete check out. And it really, I'm sure as a lot of people, especially black women's, you know, it's, it, it <laughs> can't even get my words together. It really, um, it's devastating. And I think also it's like my mind is constantly running of like, how bad is this really about to get? Like knowing it's going to be bad, but just like how bad and how fast it's going to, to happen. And in particular for me, because I live in Texas. Red state, always been a red state, you know, and um, when you live down here and you pass got dang 10, 15 Trump signs on the way to town and y'all, when I tell you I literally live eight minutes from town, eight minutes, I live eight minutes from my town and I literally can, can count 10, 15 signs. <laughs> on the way to town and it's like when this man gets in office if this man gets in office shoot if he make it then you know because we still got you know a month and a half left of somewhat of a democracy but it's just like when you have that reality you're just constantly reeling and thinking of like if one of these if one of these hoes feel froggy and want to leap it's like here we go this just don't get, get it's gonna get started and I had to literally just stay off social media. I tried to stay off social media a few days simply because it's just like every day, obviously, it's going to be a new Trump update, a new Trump something. And my brain just couldn't handle it. So I literally checked out for a few days. I was trying to get my bearings together of just like planning for the future because those of us who are millennials, it's, you know, every freaking every freaking time you know we're right almost getting ready to actually like build our life and like get stuff going you know something else happens i.e we got the pandemic like we it was just a lot of stuff every time if you are in the millennial you know bracket you know coming up on 30 uh, last uh of 1995 which is me if you're born in the 90s 95 is in in and before you know it's <laughs> It's exhausting. I'm tired of this, Grandpa. You know, it's very much exhausting. And hoping that Kamala was going to get in, you know, definitely would have been a little bit of a breather. But, you know, as much as I was so down about it, um, I finally am feeling just a tad bit better. And I'm trying to figure out a way just to, like, keep pushing. Because that's literally the only thing, you know, we can do at this point is prep keep pushing and understand at least as black folks, we not first on the list this time. Like, like at least we ain't first on the list this time because he already said who he was going after. And it was, you know, uh, Abuelita and Abuelito, Tia and Tio, you know, they he, he going after Latin America. And the irony is y'all were the ones who really increased y'all's votes for him Thinking that, well, I'm not like them, you know, because I literally just got done watching a video on Instagram and they were talking to people who basically voted for him and they came here illegally. They came here illegally, but luckily under Reagan's, um, I forgot what uh, act it was, basically they were granted, you know, citizenship. And so the woman feeling all as good as she want to feel, she's like, well, you know, um, we're different because, you know, we're, we're, we're good, you know, we're not criminals, you know, and they themselves also have undocumented family and, uh, or, you know, non-citizen, you know, family and all they're thinking in their head is, well, 
he's not going after them because you know they're not like them you know the criminals like they're not the criminals ma'am he sees all of y'all as criminals like you're missing the point and you're sitting here voting and, and in their mind you're thinking oh economy 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 well first of all you actually got to be here to experience the economy and trump already told y'all you ain't like i really it's delusional to literally hear a man say i'm going for you first and then to still think in your mind well he ain't talking about me i'm so tired of y'all hoes i wish i could just come through the screen and punch all y'all <laughs> what what <laughs> And then now, every day on the news since, it's something else about who, what he's saying he's going after. This man is literally after everybody. Now it's trans issues and, you know, naturalization. Now he's not only going after the quote unquote undocumented. He's now going over the citizens who are like naturalized citizens, i.e. those who were born here. Because a lot of, you know, immigrants would you know, come here and then have kids here and the kids are, you know, naturalized citizens because they were born here. Trump said, uh -uh, that loophole ain't gonna work either. And so it's just like, I literally, you know, obviously as black people, we've been experienced, we know what this situation is, we've already experienced it, so it ain't nothing new for us. But as much as like, I don't wanna have to deal with the, the madness that's getting ready to come forward, there's a little bit of any tiny piece of me, and I'm sure for a lot of black people, it's like, you know what? You need to experience <laughs> exactly what he was saying, because this is something my stepmom, the first person who ever told me, and I, I believe it wholeheartedly. The first person I ever heard this from was my stepmom, and she always told me, those who don't hear must feel. Let that sink in. Those who don't hear must feel. Because you can tell somebody something all day. You can try and reason with them, talk to them. But if somebody don't want to hear you, listen to you, take heed to what you got to say, they're not going to learn until they feel the ramifications of their decision. And so now here we go. Mexicans. <laughs> Y'all fit in the feel the consequences of your actions. And I feel so just like dual minded about it, like double sided because on one side, the person that I am is like empathetic, sympathetic and understands that these people came here because they were running from a lot of them were running here from dictatorship. You know, they were running from, you know, uh, like actual true crime and everything like that donald trump you were saying talking about criminals and everything like that when the true criminals are already inside the country it ain't the the, the immigrants who are over here mass you know offing students and things like that every time we had a mass you know situation you know pew pew don't want to say because youtube boy they striked me hell on the last video and i accidentally slipped up and said it twice which y'all know what i'm trying to say Anytime we had a, a, like, you know, mass, you know, offing situation with students or kids or in the store, who, what, what color were they? <laughs> okay, white. White as the Colorado driven snow, okay? But, of course, we're America. We're not going to focus on the things that, you know, the, the white, the whites be doing. So it's easier just to point the finger at them, them, them. And it's really... It's just really sad because it's like, I think about a lot of times, like the children in this situation, like these kids who get separated from the parents, these kids that literally are going to be unfortunately taken advantage of, shipped off to God knows where. And these little sanctuary cities that they be talking about that they're getting ready to send these people, ain't nothing sanctuary about it. If you watch Vice channel, Vice is where the real news is at. The real, the real world news is at Vice and the uh, and BBC. Okay, the British news. That's where the where you'll really, really, truly learn about what's going on in this country, how this country operates, and what they do with immigrants. And I've seen the backside of it, you know, and it's not pretty. It's literally everybody in basically concentration camps. It really is. 
And so it, I feel sad that, you know, there are people who did vote for that, who are about to feel that. And it really sucks because it's like, dang, your own family members didn't even try to fight for you, you know? And to think that it's because, of, oh, I'm not like them. And of course, when a lot of immigrants come over here, it's like they want to separate themselves from, you know, black people, which is why we're no longer lumping black people in uh, and people of color because it ain't people of color. OK, every other race comes here and tries to, you know, detach themselves from the black folk. And it's like if it were not for, you know, the black people here, y'all wouldn't have any of the right that you're coming here and benefiting off of. But here it is. It's like, let's lock all lock and load up and get ready to handle this election. And one lady explained it perfectly. It was like, you know, black women took the coalition and, you know, when Kamala came up and it was, you know, whites for white women for Kamala, Latin women for Kamala, whatever. Everybody just locked and loaded, ready for war. And she was like on TikTok, the lady was like, you know, we went forward and we charged and looked back. And what none of you all was there. And then she was like, and what none of y'all there? Where did y'all go? And it literally, like, for real, is like that. So at this point, black people, we on PTO. We on vacation time. <laughs>
who have, you know, recovery, things that they have to get through, that they're not going to be able to do that. And it, it just sucks. Like it really does. And a lot of people from diabetes, they put a cap on insulin because remember insulin at one point was 200 and something got dang dollars. They sent old buddy to jail because it was highway robbery. All of the regulations that's going to be on these companies, you know, for, for food and stuff like that. It's a different freaking got dang disease outbreak every day from different meats to listeria. It's always from got dang listeria to, to, to sulfate in your food, sulfur acid. It's always some type of outbreak. And that's because they're lifting the regulations that are, you know, a part of like the FDA and it's just like uh, just the thought of it is a whirlwind but yeah I don't want to keep just going in on that but I just want to kind of really explain um you know why I was you know a little bit on hiatus one and two just what this means going forward when it comes to the election um so I want to go through just a few other things too as well might as well I'm just going to touch just touch on a whole bunch of different stuff that um I saw or like kind of you know um peeps while I was on you know social media um trying to just <laughs> trying to just see what was going on because it's like I want to disconnect but I also need to still be connected so I can see what the hell's getting ready to go on in my life you know but let's go ahead and move on those of y'all y'all drop down in the comments if you you know um um, possibly could be affected by what's going forward maybe medically wise or just insurance wise or education wise you know a lot of white people is finna learn <laughs> when you f around and find out <laughs> when you f around and find out boom yeah okay uh so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic um really quick let's get into a little bit of out of the political, you know, headlines and get into some pop culture stuff, okay? Uh, Hallie and DDG, y'all. Hallie, DDG. Um, now look, Hallie, Miss Miss Mamas. You know, there's some people in the world who just ain't gonna learn their lesson until they experience it themselves. Now, I'm sure a lot of you had uh, saw that DDG was at Kai Sinat's freaking whirlwind carnival of a house. And brought his baby literally in like a, a, a slouch bag. Literally had the baby just all propped up like this in a crossbody bag. And he just pulled his baby out like he was an accessory. Sat there. And then some shit started popping off. It was a goddamn Diddy prank, y'all. A Diddy prank. DDG's getting up and it's like, it sounds like somebody's like banking and was like tied up in in like a the closet or something like that. And so Kai's over there. Oh, oh my God! I swear! I swear! I don't know what's happening. I like I don't know what's happening. And and DDG's like, man, I got my son, dog. And he goes up the stairs. And of course, Hallie, I know she blew up on on Twitter and was like, I'm here to let y'all know I'm gone. I did not approve of my baby, you know, being in this situation. And, you know, people low-key lit Hallie up <laughs> because they were like, girl, go talk to your baby daddy. No, we, we want to be out the group chat because we try to tell your ass, like, this ain't finna go the way you think it is. But, you know, everybody learning they do time. Um, and so, um, yeah, after DDG, you know, left that situation and Hallie, she kind of came back and, you know, was like, yeah, you know, I just had a, a visceral reaction basically because... You know, I hate finding out with the rest of the world, like what my child is doing. Essentially, DDG clearly didn't tell her that he was taking that baby on Kai Sinat. And for a lot of people want to sit there and say like, oh, that's that, ba that, that's that man, uh, baby. Like that's the dad. He don't have to ask you for nothing. Y'all don't know if they didn't have no conversations behind the scenes about what, when and where their child was going to be on social media. Like DDG, if you want your child to be on your social media page, then so be it. But he went over there to Kai Sinat one because we all know he has a huge audience. DDG got to build his, you know, his, his platform back up because we all know he was connected to Hallie. And that's what really kind of, you know, brought his star potential up, which is why we tried to tell you, Hallie, girl. Like, we tried to tell you, girl. We tried to tell you. Um, but, um, yeah, so... For him to go on DDG uh, for on Kai Sinet and then bring his child, it was definitely intentional. He's 
definitely gonna be using that baby as a way of clout <laughs> because if i can't use hallie th this baby is the only you know connection to her in that sense so yeah she blew up on them on, on social media and i'm sure behind the scenes she probably cussed them out as she should have because there needs to be you know some stipulations on where this child goes you brought the bag, and bring, I ain't seen no diaper bag. I ain't seen no extra bottles. You literally just bought, bought your baby in a crossbody bag like he was some goddamn accessory. Like, that really was just madness. Not to mention, Kai Sinat has everybody over there, and it's always some crazy shit that happens. Like, it's a very unpredictable environment. And so, DDG didn't think that through. Then, not to mention, his house just got swatted, like, the day before. It's what, a lot of, what happens a lot of times, these fans just be calling SWAT and just, and they'll show it to people's houses. Um, and so if you see something like that is happening, I think the last thing you would want to do is take your baby, you know, to, to a place like that. So after Hallie apologized, you know, DDG, he want to come on social media with the, oh, uh, you know, guys, one thing I hate is, you know, y'all go, going after Hallie because, you know, with postpartum, you know, being a woman that had a baby, she could be going through things that I have no idea about. So I really just try to extend grace and think about the fact that she's dealing with postpartum and, and all that type of stuff. And I was just really like, if you really felt that way, you wouldn't have went on Kai Sinat. You wouldn't have did that. You wouldn't have went on there without telling her. You obviously did not have a conversation with her. It's giving he wanted to get a reaction out of her as well because you're sitting here. And then another thing too, DDG, you want to sit here and talking about, oh, making sure her mental health is okay. When y'all broke up, you went on a, what, a three, four, four day goddamn breakup uh, tour on every goddamn podcast talking about, oh, uh, we gonna always be family. And then he said that stuff like, oh, if I'm, I don't want to have multiple baby mamas. If I am going to have another baby, it's going to be with Hallie. First of all, who told you Hallie was going to have another baby with you? Now, Hallie, <laughs> now listen, girl, <laughs> statistics say, you know, most people have baby number two, 60% of women have baby number two within, the, uh, within a year of their first child. And I'm hoping and praying that you learned your lesson, that, you know, it was a little bit of, you know, slap on the wrist and you, it, it's clicking. Okay. Like it's clicking. We try to give you that old lady under the tree advice, but it's okay. You know, hard lesson, soft behind, <laughs> but do not let that man impregnate you again. You're finally back. We're definitely know that music could be coming around the corner. Um, you know, you went from Little Mermaid, you were a Disney princess child, like, don't you let that man come back, spin the block, and, and lock you right back down. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Um, but yeah, he just was very insistent on talking, 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 talking about him and Howie's relationship, because at the end of the day, that's really all he's got. Like, he is a content creator, so his life is content. And that's why he was constantly doing that slick stuff when they were together. She was trying to hide her pregnancy. She didn't want the baby, you know, on social media and stuff. And he would do dumb stuff like, oh, put the baby's foot in it and then like hold the baby's head and turn it the other way away from the camera. It's like you were doing all that shit on purpose. And so, you know, she's a part of Rock Nation. She's a part of, you know, Beyonce's, you know, coalition. Well, I'll just put it that way. Like she and Beyonce which when if if she if you see her it's because she wants you to see her you know like people over there like you, Hallie is like she's not you DDG she doesn't need to be out there like that but yeah he want to come and do that little sorry as behind like it wasn't even an apology video it was just like oh you know uh y'all like I can take the hate you know I've been doing this a long time you know I uh I just really want to think about her and make sure she's good because you know, uh, Halo needs her. I need her. It was just like such a big eye roll moment because it's just like. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, have you been changed? We ain't forget. I ain't forget them lyrics of what you said. You said sometimes you just want to tweet some shit to ruin it all. When she was uh, the little mermaid. If there's anything we need to learn from this election is. Believe people what they say. <laughs> okay? Take people at face value. 
when somebody shows you who they are, believe them, period. So, um, yeah, Hallie and DDG, you guys, y'all drop down in the comments. Tell me what you think about his, um, about his, you know, uh, taking the baby on Kai Sinai, about people. Do you side with the people who say, like, well, that's that baby daddy. Like, you know, he ain't got to ask for permission. Or do you think that, you know, Hallie was right to be upset that he took the baby on there and obviously didn't tell her. Um, and she did, she's like, you know, I, I know that um, the that's his dad. And like, the, that's the baby's dad and he's going to be safe with him. And it's like, clearly not. Like, no matter how much you can feel like, oh, that baby's with him. I know he's always good with him. Clearly not because he put him in a very vulnerable position with that whole situation with Kai like that literally was a perfect example and then DDG now you're sitting there realizing like how foolish you look because you're trying to make a point of like oh you know you're the dad you can take your son wherever like he's always good with me but you yourself was scared you could tell he was over there nervous as hell when that stuff was happening like his visceral reaction was like come on man like I got my son and then he was like, where can I get out of here? You know? And so in your way of trying to get back at Hallie, it really was just like, it, it really backfired on you. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just hoping, you know, only thing I can give you is advice, Hallie, is keep this off social, me social media because all people are going to constantly remind you is I told you so. Like, <laughs> that is literally it. It's literally just going to be a moment of... I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? We were rooting for you. Okay. We simply were rooting for you. All right. So, uh, you know, Black Disney Princess, you know, hope going forward, you've learned your lesson, but we're going to support you, Hallie girl. We waiting on the music. Um, so what else did I want to talk about? I kind of want to, uh, separate this and do, um, maybe like another, um kind of like reality tv video and just kind of talk about all the shows that i miss because i want to talk about salt lake city because bronwyn yes girl bronwyn is laying heather at okay like laying her at um and then i said what else i want to get into it was salt lake city oh love and marriage huntsville and bell collective are back so um potentially want to review those y'all drop down in the comment if you if you think um we should review those um so yeah this video is already 30 minutes so i might come back you guys and do a a, a little extra clip because talked about election um ddg i feel like it was something else that i wanted to get into but i cannot remember but yeah you guys i'm gonna just cut this here this might kind of be like an incom in incomplete video but i'll be back maybe maybe not you know I, let me finish drinking out this time my little orange juice <laughs> Or is it? Stressed out. Two words is the only way the rest of this year is looking like it's gonna go. But um, y'all stay tuned. Maybe you see me, maybe you won't. But until then, y'all make sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'll catch y'all hoes later. Deuces.